it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. Our theme this month is wing it and we are to use something with wings in our card. I thought it would be fun to stack up two of our bitty ball pop-ups and style it like a chick. I also think it's fun when you make a big animal that matches one of the small ones so I've used the chick from the spring animals on this card as well. And you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. The Bitty Ball pop-up is about 20% smaller than our very popular Surprise Ball pop-up. You can stack those together when you want to make stacked animals, or you can just stack two Bitty Balls or two Surprise Balls. The Bitty Ball, however, does have included accessories that are very geared towards making animals. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer-thin die, and today I am using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. The die set includes six matching trapezoid dies plus a hexagon. Those can be cut through two layers at once to give you all of the decorator pieces for the bitty ball with one pass. Okay, I'm going to assemble this bitty ball. There is a full assembly video on it, so you can watch that on the product page on our website. So you find videos by going to karenberniston.com and using the search box to put in either the number or the name of the die you're looking for. That product page comes up and you'll find the assembly video right there. But step one is just to glue down those wings on each of the ball halves. There's four wings on each. Use a strong glue. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle, and we do sell both of those items on our website. Then I'm going to turn that piece back over to the front again, where I can easily see the score lines. And then what I want to do is just go around the perimeter, finding all of the tabs and folding them to the back. So there are half tabs and full tabs, and they all get folded away from yourself. Then you do the same thing at the base of each of the wings, basically right around the hexagon. So there's six folds to find. And then that's going to create one half of the bitty ball. And since I know I want to have my chick spinning in the finished card, I'll go ahead and add a brad through the hole at the bottom. And I repeat that process with the other half of the bitty ball so that I have two matching halves, one with a brad, one without. Okay, so now I just need to go around and add all of my decorator pieces to both halves of the bitty ball. Once the decorator pieces are on, then I can go ahead and start the assembly. So I want to find one of those long tabs that has a hole and a slit on each half of the ball. And I don't want it to be where when I glue them together, the holes line up, but not the slits. It needs to be both. I start by coating one of the tabs with adhesive. And then what I want to do is line up the other tabs so that it perfectly matches. So just going in there and making sure that the folds line up, I have a nice straight connection, and then inside all of the corners, the holes and the slit will also line up. Now I'll start working my way around the ball, connecting the sides, but I want to make sure that I'm going in the direction that does not have the slit. Okay, so getting to the next side, now I have two half tabs, and these do not connect to each other. They get glue and then they connect to the other half of the bitty ball. I coat each half tab with adhesive and then I just line them up so that they're side by side and they're each connecting to the other half of the ball. Then I do that to the next side and it's the exact same process with the half tabs. Now I've worked my way around to the other full tabs. So for these ones, I coat one tab with adhesive and then just make sure that the fold lines up, which will also line up the tab and hole and slit on the inside. Okay, with those four sides connected, I am now ready to put in a rubber band. A number 12 soft stretch is usually a great size to fit the bitty ball, but you can also make it a little tighter by just putting a knot in the middle. The assembly video for the bitty ball does go over the rubber bands in more detail. And now you can see why it was important that I only connected the side of the ball that did not have the slits, because now I can just reach in easily to put the rubber band through the slit and into the hole on both sides. If either of the two rubber band sides inverted into the ball, that would be too tight, but this is holding together nicely and it gives me a good spring back. Okay, so I will just speed this up to show those final half tabs being connected to finish out the assembly of the ball. So this one has the brad and it will be on the bottom. And then I made another bitty ball for the head, but I didn't add a brad into it. Instead, I'm going to glue it onto the body. So I'm actually going to glue these on so that I have a flat front head with a pointy belly body. So to do that in the closed position, I can just look out to my spokes and kind of make sure that they look very even. So I have those little triangles sticking up and they look even on all six sides. 
So depending on the animal, you may try that with having the head offset a bit from the body. This die in the bitty ball pop-up is great for making animals because that shape can be used for arms or legs or ears or wings. And I'm going to glue those wings to the inside of the bitty ball. So the glue is going to go on the larger end of the wing and then I just slide it in and attach it to the inside panel of the bitty ball. And then I can go ahead and collapse that ball to really give it a good press so that glue can set up. So for any kind of bird, that is a way to add wings. There are two size hearts in the bitty ball pop-up and I am using the larger one as the beak of the chick and then the smaller ones will be the feet. There is a die in the set to cut two small circles that make great eyes. And I like to take a white gel pen to add some catch lights to them. And then to give my chick more of a wide-eyed look, I'm using the centers of the ears die that's also in the set. And then I just glued those eyes into place. There is a bow in the set and I folded it up the middle first and then I flatten it back out and I put a little glue under the tails of the bow and then with the bottom ball flattened I'm going to go in there and press those tails to attach to the bitty ball then when it pops up since I folded the bow up the middle it'll just fold it and be able to pop up but also flatten down. I assembled a chick from our spring animals and then to make it match the big one I took the bow out of our chicken, pig, and lamb die set and added it to my chick. And then I'll just hook my little chick onto the wing of the big one and then glue it into place. I started with a piece of cardstock 12 inches by 5 inches and then I scored it measuring from the left edge at 5 inches, 10 inches, and 11 inches. So how this is going to work is the big panel is going to fold up from the bottom and then on the other side there are two panels so they're both going to fold in the same way and that way I will have a little pocket essentially to hide my magnets. And then just to make it close a little smoother I want to trim just a little bit off of that top edge so that it isn't bunching in that fold. So I have a bottom fold card, top fold over flap. I found some pretty pattern paper in my stash and I cut two four and three quarter inch squares. One will fit perfectly in there. The one that goes here I'll have to trim a little bit off the bottom because of course I've cut that panel a little shorter as well. And then for a window pane I'm just using a right on transparency. I've cut that to four and a half inch square. I'm not going to put any of my paper in the card yet except for temporarily and that's just going to be the bottom panel of paper because I need to be able to die cut through it with the circle. So I'm using some temporary removable tape just to hold it in place for die cutting. So closing up my card and getting into that closed position with the flap down, now I'm going to use the largest circle from our circles crosshatch die set and I just want to center that on the card. But for now I'm only going to tape it down where it touches the upper flap. And that's because I'm going to have to cut this a couple times to get through the panels that I need. So I'm going to open the card up so that it is only the upper flap that is going to get cut by the circle the first time. But it's going through two layers of the flap because the flap is folded over. So after running that through my die cutting machine, I don't want to remove the tape or the die yet. I'm going to close up my card and then I'm going to put new pieces of tape on the die so that it stays in the exact same position, but now I'm going to be cutting through the main panel of my card. Once the die is secured to the card, then I can remove the tape from the upper flap and then fold that flap out of the way and get rid of the little pieces that have been die cut. So now I still have to open this card all the way up because I only want to die cut through my main panel and that piece of pattern paper. So I see that it has flopped out of the way, so let me just get it back taped into place there. So now I'll send that through my die cutting machine again and it will cut that big circle through the panel and the pattern paper that's temporarily taped inside. Okay, so since that pattern paper is only temporarily attached, I can actually get between those two layers now to add the transparency. And I'm just going to leave one piece of tape kind of at the bottom to keep that in position to where I can almost just sort of hinge it out of the way to add the transparency and then just flop the paper back into the same position. Okay, so then I'm going to glue my other piece of pattern paper inside the card. And now I just need to figure out where to put the hole for the brad. So if I squish the chick down 
and then close up the card, I can see how it's going to look through the window and then kind of use the die itself, just holding it over the top of the chick and then moving the chick out of the way, then I can use that die as a template to figure out where the hole needs to be and just making sure that it's centered right to left as well. Then I pierce a hole through the entire card and then making sure that I keep the chick squished down while I open up those brads, I get them through the hole, open them up on the back side. And now I have the chick inside the card and it shows wonderfully through the window. I buy my thin strong magnets from K&J Magnetics. I will put a link in the description box and I am going to use four of these. The first two magnets are going to go on with a mini glue dot inside the card in the bottom two corners. Then what I want to do is just check the location before I add the other magnets. So I will let them stick temporarily to the ones below and then just bring my flap down and make sure that I can't see the magnets. So if I can't see them, then that means that they are higher than the fold in the finished flap so that that's a good position. So then what I wanna do is just add some mini glue dots to the top of those magnets. So I'm not sticking them down where they are, I'm actually making them sticky on top. And now I just need to close the flap down to pick up the magnets in the right spot. So just folding that down, it'll pick up the magnets, they'll be right there, and then when I fold in the flap, it will sandwich them between the two layers. Okay, and I definitely have enough strength to hold the card closed with just those magnets. I don't need to add any more, so I can go ahead and seal my flap closed permanently. Then I'm going to add a piece of paper to the back of the card that can cover those brad prongs. I did use the adhesive just around the perimeter so that the brad can still spin between the layers. We have a new set of charms called the Backyard Charms. When you don't want them to be charms, you can just trim off the little hole, and I'm going to use these little flowers to cover my magnets on the inside of the card. On the chick for the front of the card, I actually cut the body a couple more times out of black, and then I'm going to glue that in slightly offset from the original chick to give it a bit of a shadow. I cut the word just from our word set 10, thinking of you, out of both green and black, and slightly offset them from each other for a little drop shadow. And then to get the word in, I could just trim out the I in out of the word sitting in that same die set, and once again out of both green and black, slightly offset for a shadow. And I did just make sure when I was gluing that strip of cardstock across the front of the card that I only used the glue on the outside sections so that I wouldn't see any adhesive through the transparency when the card was open. And then I just glued my greeting onto the card. And the letters for chicken came out of our alphabet set. For a place to sign the card or write a personal greeting, I cut one of the hexagons from the bitty ball set out of white and then I'm just attaching that to the inside of the card so that it sort of disguises the feet and the head of the chick as well as provides like a little white backdrop for it on the front of the card. You know, there's something so magical and delightful about a pop-up card, and it really is for all ages. Don't limit yourself to only sending these little animal cards to children. This would be delightful for anybody to receive in the mail. And especially right now where we can't gather, it's important that we check in on our friends and our relatives, and this could be the perfect card to do that. My finished card measures five by five, so you can actually put that in an A7 rectangular envelope, and you don't necessarily have to have a square envelope. If you check the description box below this YouTube video, you will find links to the supplies as well as to the blog post. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.